You are listening to Keystone Stock Talk Podcast, episode 155. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for stopping by. This podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at www.keystocks.com. Come back often, and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or on iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter at Keystocks and on Facebook or via our 24-hour streaming radio station, pennystocks.fm. And keep submitting your stocks via the usual social channels or at our website, keystocks.com, for our Your Stock Our Take segment. And we just might review your stock in an upcoming show and let you know if it is a buy, sell, or hold. This week, we get back to our case for, case against debates. The company in our crosshairs is Equitable Group Inc., symbol EQB on the TSX, which with nearly 300,000 Canadians across the country is Canada's challenger bank. Equity Bank has grown to become the country's eighth largest independent Schedule One bank. We flipped a coin, at least Aaron says he did. And Mr. Dunn will be taking the case for, while Brennan takes the case against this growing financial services firm. I will sit in as judge, jury, and executioner. Our Your Stock, Our Take this week came in from a listener on Mav Beauty Brands, symbol MAV on the TSX Venture, which operates a diversified portfolio of four complementary personal care brands, Mark Anthony, Ren Pure, Cake Beauty, and The Main Choice offering premium quality hair care, body care, and beauty products. The listener asks us our take on the stock, which we reviewed in a past show and saw it as pricey at the time. With the stock selling off, the listener wonders if it offers value today. So let's get into our show. I'm going to welcome back both of my co-hosts this week, Aaron and Brennan. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Yep. It's uh, start of the fall season here, which is, uh, if you know, for anybody who knows the financial markets, things get a little bit, usually they get a little um, a little slow in the summertime. But, you know, the start of, sol- of fall, things really start to pick up. And then, of course, January is another time that it really picks up. But I don't know. I just feel that, like, when you come out of the summer, you get into the fall, things are just a little bit exciting. It's you know, yeah, I, see what I, happens I, next. Exciting for the markets. Uh, we've got uh, you know sports at a great point. We got hockey coming back at the end of this month, which I am uh, primed for. And of course, we've got an election, uh, which seems yes, to happen October every couple of years now. Coming yeah. up here, yeah, every couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and a debate tonight. The yeah, the debate first is tonight. and only English debate tonight, right? Uh, is live. it the only English debate? I, I thought so. so. I mean, there's well, well, two you could French. Be right. Yes, I, yeah. I, I thought. Yeah. That there may have been more, but I, I'm I'm not certain, so I'll take your word for that. But yeah. we know that there is one tonight at uh, six o'clock Pacific Standard, not yeah, nine, nine o'clock Eastern. Eastern. Yeah. So yeah. this is actually one. Normally, I'll, I'll admit. I mean, I don't pay too much attention to the debates because I find that politicians just basically say whatever they want, and then that's not necessarily what you see um, if they're elected. But I, I I'm going to take an interest in this debate. I think it's important. There's uh, there's you know. We're at yeah, a, and I, kind of a critical point here, and I just want to see what everybody has to say. I, too, will be watching. And I would say I encourage our listeners, anybody out there who's listening right now, yeah, get informed, get out there, watch this one. As painful as it may be to see a bunch of adults kind of talking over themselves for an hour and a half, hopefully we can see some productive moments. I, I do hope from our, you know, from a personal perspective, we see some really for a country perspective too, but we see some debate on some economic issues. Um, I kinda, we kind of know our prime minister wants to pay no mind to this side of the equation, but having some level of, in my opinion, f- fiscal responsibility in your home or at a government level is a good thing. Uh, these, you know, he wants <laughs> to talk about families, but, you know, economic issues obviously affect all families. So, I mean, l- let's have some debate there. No, no. Silly statements made, and hopefully we get some digging into that, and maybe, you know, it would just be nice to have some real debate on those issues and and not just um, politicians speak, but we'll see. What we get to, hopefully there is some in those areas. 
hopefully everybody's not talking over everyone like we do on this show of course but um you know just it, hopefully it makes for some not just good theater but actually we get some good policies out there and uh, there is some healthy debate uh, which would be nice but it's probably wishful thinking i'll be tuning so in what, anyways what what do you want to hear from the candidates like what would be something what would be a specific policy uh, initiative from one of the candidates that would get you interested well i mean in myself and you were talking about uh, in in the in the area of the housing market like are there going to be new taxes put in is there going to be a wealth tax put in uh like what in each of those areas um you know come out with a clear uh, clear guidance on what your platform is or what your your opinions are from each from each individual and how you plan to improve every any area of the, the major areas healthcare uh, economic issues but housing's a you know a big issue that uh, that all candidates will likely address uh, lay out a plan don't just complain about what's happening right now show what is being done wrong right now but then say this is our three point plan, five point plan to get uh, the country on track in these areas. So some specifics would be nice. Yeah, I'd also love just, to you know. uh, to see, you know, the TFSA contribution go up. That would be awesome. I would love that, uh, especially as a young investor, yeah. throwing as much money as I can, you know, at my TFSA. Um, so I think that would be I cool. mean, we, I think you the know, it's famous. Insane. I'll just say it's insane when the liberals uh, were <laughs> yeah. took over from the conservatives last time that the narrative that they pushed was that the TFSA was something well, for that, the rich. that benefited the rich, right? Which is just, I mean, that's preposterous. It's, it's at the time it was increased to 10,000 a year, it backed down to, you know, about 50, 600 or so um, now. But I mean, do you think that that's really moving the needle, needle for the ultra rich in Canada? It's a rounding error. It's ridiculous. It's, it's I just talked about this. So this is very oh, yeah. much a yeah. middle class tool. It's for people who are responsible, want to save money, want to invest money. And that's what we should be encouraging you know what i would really like to see or hear from not not just from the debate but from some politician somewhere is is a really clear plan on how to encourage entrepreneurship more entrepreneurship in canada and also how to um, revamp our education system for the modern world so more more stem training in schools at a younger age uh, more financial literacy training and i know training and i know that or education i know that these things education is um is managed at the provincial level but there are things that the federal government can do to encourage um you know, yeah and those are we're very much aboard on that increasing you know stem education but those are you know the payoff for that is you know 20 years. years down yeah, the road exactly. or tw 10 years down the road politicians don't want to hear that because you don't get votes those are smart long-term policies that I would love to hear put into place and not just lip service towards those. Um, yeah. And, and on the TFSA increase the amount, I mean, I would be in favor of, you know, getting rid of capital gains tax on investments. I mean, you're talking about investing, growing. So you're not a solid supporter to. of the NDP. <laughs> Uh, we try not to get political on as this Brandon show, is. right? But I as mean, Brandon, you know, hey, I, I want less government in my pocket, right? So yeah, yeah of course. I mean, and and like as far as liber like as as far as socially, um, you know, I just we don't want to get into our views too much in that area as well. But um, you know, I, I wish there was a party that was more socially liberal and just had some fiscal constraint you know just had to i don't even want constraint i just want responsibility we just don't hear any of that on the fiscal side from our current government and you, you certainly don't hear it from some of the other parties out there I, I don't think we hear enough of the debate period in this country just about um the country's balance sheet you know and and these things need to be discussed because they affect everyone regardless of whether we want to have a, a prime minister who puts his head in the sand and just kind of, you know, hear no evil, see no evil, or whatever, whatever you want to call it, just looks like, uh, you know, avoiding, the, there's nothing to see here. That's what I see as, <laughs> as uh, you know, as the debt piles up behind him, right? And it's get, you yeah. know, it's going to fall onto his head at some point, but nothing to see here. That's the image that I see. So you should, Hope. you should start creating memes. Yep. Mm, yeah, I mean, sounds like it looks, sounds that like one's some low hanging fruit. I'm sure it's out there already. I mean, because mm -hmm. that's that's really 
Quite simple. But I, I, I think, you know, it would be interesting to just uh, see if we do get some healthy debate, which we probably won't. But I'm going to be watching tonight. And uh, I mean, it's a short runway. We'll be voting in a couple weeks, right? So there's not, you know, this is a really quick, you know, it's a snap election. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, we're not sure which way it'll go. The the polls are actually, you know, quite surprising to what uh, I think uh, Justin thought yeah, when he started three this election. Months yeah. ago, I would have thought that O'Toole stood very little chance. Now it looks like maybe, but it's it's going to be close regardless, and probably a minority government either way. And I I don't think the drama will end on election night because there could be some parties joining up after that and that may be worse than before <laughs> so who knows we'll see we're gonna we're gonna not get into that we're gonna get into some in- questions from uh clients but also just from listeners on some individual companies uh we're gonna get back to our you, our debate case for case against brennan has the case against aaron has the case for this was sent in by a listener who did a uh, speaking of memes he did a nice meme did he not he did uh, call i think yes, he did thank yeah. you Colin. yes um, you know, he actually, he wanted me to take the for case and Ryan to take the against case. So he was, uh, he was, you know, um, actually I won't even say what I was going to say there until after the debate, <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, that's well, here's, here's the thing, uh, equitable would fall under Aaron's uh, purview. Precisely. So he, you know, he, he is the, uh, the gentleman that we would insert for that, uh, to go against Brennan. And, and I smell um, an easier victory. We too. always, as a rule here, we flip a coin, right? We just we don't give anybody either side. We just flip a coin, and then they argue the for or against from there. We're gonna trust that Aaron flipped that coin, Brennan, uh, aren't we? Yes, I flipped a coin. I was given the company name. I was told to basically pick my side. I decided to flip a coin, and, and he's an honorable that, gentleman. We'll believe him. We'll believe him. Brennan's going against. Um, I trust him. I yeah. trust him. Yeah. So we'll see. I, we may have a good inkling as to which way this one already goes, but, you know, we'll leave an open mind and we'll look into the company that we're debating today is the Equitable Group Inc., symbol EQB on the TSX. Trades at about $152, $2.58 billion market cap. As far as what Equitable does... Uh, they provide resi- residential and commercial mortgage lending solutions to customers across Canada, predominantly in the single family non prime segment. The company operates through its wholly owned subsidiary, Equitable Bank. They also have a firm digital footprint uh, that uh, is growing at a good rate as well. So, d- should we get started? Gentlemen, are you guys ready? Who Certainly. Want- and would Brennan like to choose who goes I- first? I would like to go first, yeah. Oh, well. Brennan's going first. It's like presenting, he's got a bombshell to release. It's like you? presenting in front of the class. You know, you just want to get it off your chest, get it over and done with. You know, get it That's over my with. Strategy All right. usually here. So you're you're ready. I am ready to to add to the loss table. Whoa, <laughs> the judge. Whoa. it's always <laughs> good when he. But I am ready. <clears throat> starts trash talking you before the. <laughs> Uh, it's all funny. Games. I'm. T- uh, that's terrible. All right, I'm going to give you 60 Thankfully, seconds. There here. are no missed trials in the stock no, talk debate. No. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, we wish. Right, I wish you the this. best of luck. And um, I'm going to start. Four, three, two, one, go. Number one, the credit rating agency DBRS Morningstar confirmed EQ Bank's long-term credit rating at triple B, which just qualifies as investment grade, whereas TD and RBC enjoy ratings of double A because of their credit fundamentals and global diversification. Equitable's loan portfolio primarily consists of alternative mortgages, which are considered riskier. As we know, the Canadian housing market has performed very well, which Equitable has benefited from. If there is potentially a housing downturn, EQ Bank will likely be hit harder than other Canadian banks. Number three, since early August, we have seen President and CEO Andrew Moore exercise options totaling over 11,000 shares and simultaneously selling these shares into the market, potentially indicating that the stock is overvalued at its current price. Number four, it trades with a trailing PE multiple of about nine times, which is by no means cheap, but is likely close to fair value considering its growth and relative size compared to other Schedule 1 banks. You know, really, I think that there are other banks out there worth your dollars. All right. Well done. Well put together. Difficult case to argue. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay. Excellent. So, I'm, I'm ready Mr. to go. Mr. Dunn, are you ready to also, I I'm going to yes. have to say, uh, to be uh, fair, are you ready to add to your loss total as well? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, you're, okay, let's just do All this. right, four, three, two, one, go. Eighth largest bank in Canada and also a fintech innovator with its digital EQ bank founded in 2016. Tremendous track record of financial performance, record Q2 results with EPS growth of 35%. What's even more impressive is Equitable's EPS grew 3% in 2020 when all of the big six banks in Canada reported significant declines, averaging negative 16%. Return of equity tier on capital ratio is both strong. Stock trades at less than 10 times earnings, which is a discount to the big six peer group. Finally, the focus on fintech and digital banking continues to bear fruit with EQ Bank digital customers up 79% year over year and deposits up 99% to over 6.5 billion. Equitable Group is a very interesting name for investors looking for a more nimble, growth-oriented bank that is expanding further into digital. All right, with Almost nine, ten seconds to spare. Just drops wow. the mic wow. on that one, eh? I'm going to finally let the cro clock run out. <laughs> Bam, there you go. Whoa. Okay. Just, Brennan, how do you feel about that? He left almost ten seconds on the table. I think that's a record. I think there's, you know, an opportunity for a, a, a Brennan W here, you know. But, uh, you know, I'll let you, you be the judge, though. We'll see. Where do you think your opportunity lies uh, well, in, in comparing the arguments one against the other? Like what specific point? Primarily you leaving 10 seconds on the table. Um, <laughs> but, if I, but if I make the main points, Just, what, what difference does it make? Do you think it's going to impact somebody's investment return if I leave 10, 10 seconds on the table? It would impact that mine probably. You know, is but, in uh, my hands though right now. So. Yeah. You know, no, no, there's I no mean, point. There's no real point. I'll let, I'll let Ryan go here. I think that right. the you know the arguments against equitable right now would be an argument that you you say the you know the housing market is overheated they're on the non prime end of the market and then you know you, you have certain level of higher risk from this than a traditional bank but um I would then be in the business of predicting a housing market decline or collapse uh, we're not in that business. Uh, we think that Equ Equitable is quite well run. Aaron pointed that out. It actually trades at a discount to its small to mid size bank peers, despite um, higher growth and ROE and all those things in many areas. So I think this one may have been predetermined going in. I'm going to favor and uh, rule for Aaron in this case. Yeah, and that's why yeah. I didn't really. Uh, that's why I didn't really answer saying you know that I had a better chance. I didn't actually believe that. I think that you made a lot of good cases, and you know I think that you could have like added in that ten seconds to the fact that just their capital ratios are improving or have improved like substantially even since before the pandemic, um, and then as well just the fact that their allowance for credit losses are getting you know near pre-pandemic levels as well so you know it, they're they're trending in a nice direction uh in my point or in my uh view um but yeah yeah and i think debate. i think i'm i think growth will slow you would think into 2022 um from the estimates that i've seen out there they probably likely will but um you know it's not going to increase its book value likely next year by just under 20 percent um that is unlikely to happen um, but, you know, it's it, it's an interesting company, uh, trades it. Like I said, um, I have a group of small to mid-sized banks that includes Canadian Western, Home Capital, Laurentian, VersaBank. Um, it trades at uh, the average or median is 10.2 times next year's earnings. It's about 8.9. So it trades at a discount. There's growth there. Uh, it is trading at a premium to the book value trade uh, off the group, but price to book, but um, not substantial and close to what the average of the larger Canadian banks are. So there's good growth. It seems to be well managed. Um, you know, your downside risk is if there is, you know, some kind of housing uh, slump or slide or obviously a collapse, they are probably more... Uh, more susceptible to that than some of the larger banks that have um, 
not as much. It's not subprime, but non-prime um, mortgages yeah, on it's, their it's books. Difficult. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to say. I mean, one of the things that impressed me, and what people need to understand when we're doing these stock debates is that, you know, when you're for, when you're speaking for a company, your 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 job is to present the company in the best light as possible. It doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that you're recommending the stock. One of the things that did impress me is that not only is the is the company producing really strong earnings growth this year, but that they actually had growth last year. And when you look across the big six banks, none of them grew their earnings per share last year. They all had declines, ranging between about, I believe, five yeah. percent to you know twenty five. That is roughly. impressive. Yeah. Um, so pretty good decline. So right there, you know, you're looking at that. Um, that has it, it, it's demonstrated some some resilience there in uh, in a difficult environment. But, you know, ultimately, to actually say whether or not I think somebody should buy the stock would require more research. It's strange because last year it was such an unnatural environment, too. And it kind of continues with, you know, all the CERB payments, the CWS payments. Uh, I, the one thing I worry about, not the one thing, there's part of what I worry about is um, when those payments are taken away, um, are some people that maybe could not maintain their mortgage in a situation where that has had a delayed impact on uh, some of the defaults that we might see. I'm not sure. That is just speculating. Like that is not my area of expertise, but you know, it, there is a lot of money, free money that's just been sloshing out there to keep everything kind of normal um, when that's taken away, because eventually it has to be taken away. Everybody has to, you know, most people that can are able to get back to work, have to get back to work and uh, aren't just getting free money if there are some of those jobs have been eliminated. Uh, do we see a scenario where, you know, there's some of the defaults that may have happened and were delayed? They were just delayed. I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not certain on that. But um, we will continue to monitor that going forward. But as, as of right now, equitable group, you know, seems like a reasonable potential holding. Now, uh, do we want to just move on to our Your Stock, Our Take? I think, I think so. we should. It's time we answer a question on Your Stock in a little segment we like to call Your Stock, Our Take. Buy, sell, or hold. So I've got that. It's on Mav Beauty Brands Inc. Symbol M A V on the TSX Venture. Two dollars and twenty cents. Uh, Eighty-six million dollar market cap. So a micro small cap company. Uh, what does Mav do? They are a global personal care platform focused on acquiring great independent brands and helping these brands scale and win market share. They have built an operating platform to build out brands through expanded distribution, innovation, and marketing. They have a diversified portfolio. There's four complementary personal care brands. The first, Mark Anthony, Renpure, Cake Beauty, and The Main Choice. They offer premium quality hair care, body care, and beauty care products. They are sold in over 25 countries uh, worldwide. Now, let's look at the Q2 or the latest results, Q2 2021. Revenue decreased 1.8% to $29.1 million. Adjusted EBITDA decreased to $3.8 million from $8.1 million in the same period last year. Uh, that was mainly due to lower gross profit margin, higher selling and administration, and lower revenues in the quarter. Adjusted free cash flow was down, too, to $2.3 million from seven point one. So, precipitous falls in adjusted EBITDA and free cash flow. At the end of the quarter, net debt was $123 million. There was about $17.8 million in cash. So significant debt position for a company of this size. Let's look at, um, you know, for the past, since 2017, we've seen uh, this company acquire a number of brands, go from $42 million in sales up to a trailing uh, 12-month sales this year of $113 million. So good growth in revenue. But on, let's look at that poor quarter. What led to this? Commenting on it, management stated they were disappointed with the top and bottom line, which I would hope they would be. But they also stated there were many reasons to be optimistic about the future. Then they stressed the value of the four core brands. That's what they're optimistic about. I find that a bit nonspecific. The great brands 
were here in this poor quarter. So they were present in that quarter. So it appears there are some execution issues and more at uh, stake here with Mav. As a result, change is coming at Mav. The company uh, added a new or introduced a new president on August 17th. They made the decision to streamline product collection to create more efficient assortment of products during the quarter. This resulted in inventory-related provisions and clearance of non-core or lower-margin products. So there was a great deal of noise in those numbers that we came out with, particularly to the bottom line, which likely made them look worse than they actually were, but they were still not good. Mav has potential given the acquisition-related growth, but the company has leveraged up on this acquisition journey with roughly $140 million in debt. That's a high level for a business with an $86 million market cap. So it's now become, from when we last reviewed it, a potential turnaround story. Uh, given the weak Q2 results, the refocusing, new incoming CEO, the limited organic growth, higher debt levels, we continue to pass on MAV despite the fact that its share price has dropped over the past three years from over $12 to $2.20 today. Uh, we see too much uncertainty to be buying the company at these levels. Certainly, just even at the start of the year here, I believe in February, the stock was up in the $7 range. Mm -hmm. um, now just above two. So, I mean, obviously the market is reacting to the deteriorating financial performance. And, you know, generally as a rule, we like to see some momentum in the financial performance. And um, obviously the momentum is, is on the negative side here. So no hurry to, to rush into anything like Mav. And if, any, if anybody likes the business, this is something you just kind of throw on your monitor list. You watch if the company starts to execute better, you start to see some appreciation in the market, then um, then you can you can consider it then. Yeah, and a growth by acquisition story, um, you have to walk a kind of a tightrope and do it carefully. Um, in this situation, they've gone the debt route. Um, now they've l layered on quite a bit of debt to buy these businesses, but it does not look like if you look at the last quarter, you know they had a decrease in sales. Um, it does not look like there's a ton of organic growth in these businesses. So they bought the businesses. There looks like there's growth in the business via those acquisitions. But um, you've bought, brought on all that debt. You can't add too much more in terms of debt. And your share price has collapsed. So you're not wanting to use your share price as currency to go out there and issue more shares because it can be dilutive. Uh, so they're caught in a bit of a catch-22 where, you know, on the one side, it's going to be diluted. On the other side, you can only push your debt level so high. And so how do you grow now? Because there's not a ton of organic growth. They got to try to spur organic growth. So did they buy the right businesses? Maybe they brought some businesses with st some stability, but you know, there's clearly some issues here at MAV. Um, and, you know, we see a justified drop in the share price over the course of this year. Uh, they had actually, when we last reviewed it, they had a pickup in sales uh, after the, the, the onset of COVID uh, as a number of people stocked up their shelves with beauty, makeup products, all of that. And uh, we were asked at that time, in the quarter if it looked like a buy because you saw growth in revenues, growth in income. And we warned that there was some uh, pull through of buying in, and then future quarters likely wouldn't be as, uh, as good. And we saw that going forward. And now the company's just, you know, hit some other issues. And, uh, you know, the, the valuations don't look good and are also are difficult to look at at this point. So we would steer clear of MAV. We'll continue to revisit. The debt does worry us, though. So I think that'll end it for this week. We'd like to thank all of our uh, listeners for sending in their questions to our Your Stock, Our Take and our Case for Case Against debates. Keep those coming in. We'll debate stocks. We'll pit two stocks against each other. So keep those coming in so we can provide you with the content. Rate us and review us on iTunes. We say that every week. Go in, rate us, review us. That helps, and we will continue to bring this content to you. As always, I wish all of our clients and all of our uh, listeners out there profitable investing. Profitable investing. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.